Good morning and welcome to K Chapel Sunday School class. I'm Barbara Hadnot and I'm one of, the, uh, one of the teachers for class 14. And we are glad that each of you can join us today. We have a good lesson today. In fact, we are starting a new unit, The Call of Women. And um, we know that women have done a lot of work in civil rights and politics and even in the church. And so looking ahead, we will be talking about the ministries of Mary Magdalene, Lydia, Priscilla, and the woman at the well. So today we will be focusing on Anna. The topic of the lesson is Women Speak Out. Devotional reading, Joel chapter 2, verses 28 to 32. Background scripture is Luke chapter 2, verses 36 through 38, Acts chapter 1, verses 12 through 14, chapter 2, 16 to 21, and chapter 21, 8 through 9. The print passage comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 36 through 38, and Acts chapter 2, 16 through 21, and chapter 21, verses 8 through 9. Our key verse, it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And this comes from Acts chapter 2, verse 17. We're going to look at the um, objectives for the lesson, and then we'll do a brief prayer. So having gone through this lesson and completing this lesson, we should be able to examine how God called and empowered women to proclaim his message. Affirm the contributions of godly women to the church's mission. Advocate for greater recognition of God call women in the church. So let us pray. Father God, we thank you for the privilege and the opportunity and the freedom to study your word. We thank you for the technology that allows us to do so. And we just pray for the teaching and blessings of the Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. Okay, so by way of introducing the lesson, we know that there are a lot of African American women out there who have done a lot of work in civil rights, politics, education, uh, entertainment, and even in the church. Some of these people, we know who they are but we may not know their story. For example, the book, uh, in our book, we learn some things about Coretta Scott King and Ella Baker. Coretta King was a singer, and I didn't know that. And she used that talent to raise awareness and to raise funds for her husband's movement. And she also was the one who spoke out very early. She was a critic of the Vietnam War 
and she was the one to really get her husband to speak out. Then we have Ella Baker, who was very, um, she was very active in civil rights. And although Dr. King was the face and the voice of the Southern Leadership Conference, she's giving credit for the one who really birthed that organization and who um, really set the agenda that, that they had for it. So um, she also worked with the NAACP and, the also, and also the student, nonviolent student coordinating committee. So um, we see that this is very timely because Black History Month will be next month and then we, we will be coming up on um, Women History Month in March. So there are a couple of other women that you may not know about, may never have heard of them. One is Dr. June Jackson Christmas, and she was one of the first to specialize in community mental health care, especially for low-income families, and she also served as a commissioner of mental health in New York City, and she served under two mayors, three mayors. And then you have Gay McDougal. She was instrumental. She worked for the United Nations. She was one of the five on the International Board of South Africa that, that uh, established the democratic election that resulted in Nelson Mandela being elected as president. So um, we all know about Merle Evers, but do we know that she chaired the NAACP uh, when she was 62 years old. And she also was the first black woman to sit on the Public Works Commission in Los Angeles. So this next month and in March, this will be a good time to find out about how rich our heritage is when it comes to black women and even today. And everyone now knows about Kamala Harris, our first woman vice president. So um, our biblical text, we will be talking about Anna and her name is equivalent with Hannah, which means grace or divine favor. And we will see that Anna was a woman of God and her prophesying and her prayers, uh, the content of her prayers and prophecy are similar to those of Hannah at the birth of Samuel. So we will also be talking about um, the ushering in of the Holy Spirit at the day of Pentecost and we will see uh, all the miraculous things that happened there which included um, even after that sometime after that um, it, we see where Philip's daughters even prophesied and so that was some years later after um, the time at Pentecost but none of this would happen were it not for the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was here in the beginning. And we can see that in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. And the Holy Spirit has given men and women gifts throughout the ages. Uh, he's given wisdom. He's given uh, discernment. So all of that is very important because the Holy Spirit just didn't stop 
um, empowering people a few years ago, he's still doing it today. He's empowering people to point the way to salvation. So we have three outlines. The first is Anna serves prophetically. And this comes from Luke chapter 2 verses 36 through 38 and I will be re reading the King James Version. And there was one Anna, a prophetess, the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher. She was of a great age and had lived with an husband seven years from her virginity. And she was a widow for about four score and four years, which de departed not from the temple, but served God with fastings and prayers night and day. And she coming in at that instant gave thanks likewise unto the Lord and spake of him to all them that looked for redemption in Jerusalem. So similar to Simeon, we see that Anna was a devout woman. She was devoted to fasting and praying in the church. She was devoted to her work, the work of God. And she was empowered to do this by the Holy Spirit. And we see how important her work is because so many people in the Bible, they go unnamed. You hear, you know, it says, and a certain man or a certain person did this. You don't hear anything about their name, their family name, or, nor where they're from. But with Anna, we see that um, her father was Fenuel, and his name mean the face of God. She was from the tribe of Asher, and Asher was lo located at the far northwestern part of Israel's territory. So it's very important that all of this is listed about her. We know that she was married seven years. She was a widow about um, 84 years. So she was really an elderly lady. And as soon as she saw Jesus enter the temple, she knew that this is what I've been prophesying and praying and fasting about it. And she talked about it publicly. And she, um, the people who were there, she pointed them to salvation. So we see that when God calls someone, he empowers them. You're not going to be out there just on your own. So the question we have here is, how do you react when you finally receive a long-awaited answer to a prayer? We see Anna prophesied. Our second outline is all shall prophesy. This comes from Acts chapter 2, 16 through 21. And again, I'll be reading from the King James Version. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaidens, 
I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall not be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord come. It shall come to pass that whoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So here the lesson goes to the day of Pentecost. And this is where you have the disciples um, and a total of about 120 people gathered in one place because they're expecting, uh, Jesus has already told them to wait for the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit is ushered in. He comes in. You hear the rushing wind. You see the fire and it's settling on them like club and tongs. And they begin to speak in other language, languages. So the people gathered in Jerusalem at that time, they start mocking them. And then they say, well, they're just drunk. So this prompts Peter to get up and respond to what they're saying because he's letting them know it's too early in the morning for someone to be drunk. You know, it's nine o'clock. They're not drunk. This is a miracle that's going on. This is what has already been prophesied. So he knew that the Jews know the laws, they know the statues, and they know the prophecy. So he went back to Joel, and this is what he brought to them. No more than the promise of God to Israel for their repentance. Um, he is pouring out his spirit on men and women so that everyone can have access to God. And so this is what he was telling them. He was telling them about the, the miracle. And so we can see that not only did Anna um, prophesy, Simeon prophesied, you can go back in the day to other people who um, were people of God. And he even said, um, even the people of low degree, like the handmaidens, the servants, the people who, you know, the, the ordinary people who you would think wouldn't be, he certainly he doesn't mean those people, but he was wanting them to know this is for everybody. And then he said, God says he'll even do signs and wonders because he wanted them to know and he wants us to know that when we see the work of the Holy Spirit, we will know definitely that is his work because the work of the Holy Spirit is work that nobody else can do. So the question is, do you take advantage of opportunities to share your faith or experiences concerning Jesus to those you meet. So why or why not? Our third outline is, and more shall prophesy. So we will get into more of what Peter was telling them that is not the higher ups, is not the people who have the intellectual smarts and those who have degrees this is for everybody everybody can have access to god um, this comes from acts chapter 21 verses 8 and 9 and we'll be reading from 
the King James Version. And the next day, we that were of Paul's company departed and came unto Caesarea. And we entered into the house of Philip the Evangelist, which was one of the seven, and abode with him. And the same man had four daughters, virgins, which did prophesy. So we see here that this is sometimes later where the lesson text picks up because Philip is already a deacon. He has already had the experience where he met the Ethiopian eunuch and where he explained to him what he was reading and then he baptized um, the eunuch. But he stayed in that region to continue teaching and leading people, the lost people, to salvation. So now Peter and his team are on their way to Jerusalem and he has already been stopped, I think about four days into the journey of people who were warning him and telling him about, you know, could be impending, impending danger on his way to uh, Jerusalem. So he stopped at Philip's house and his daughters began to, uh, began to prophesy. We don't know if they were prophesying regarding warning him about something or if they were comforting him about something. But either way, we see that this was very important and important enough that Luke would include it in the book of Acts. And I'm sure he was led by the Holy Spirit because again, it's showing that other people um, can prophesy, other people can pray, other people can talk about the word of God. Anybody, as long as you are filled with the spirit and you are spirit led, you can feel good about talking to others about Christ. In fact, those of us who are Christian, we should always be ready with an answer if someone approaches us about, um, if they approach us about our salvation. We should be ready with the word for them. Even we should be ready when someone asks us to do something. We should always be under ready because we have the power of the Holy Spirit. So the question is, how can we better engage the world for Christ, utilizing everyone God has called and anointed? Well, we can do that by advocating and encouraging others to get involved in the work of the church, in the work of God. And um, a lot of things that people are doing in the church, a lot of you have to have a position. You have to have a title. It would be good if you had a degree. It might be something really technical that you need to do. But it's not just limited to those people. The only degree you need is a BA degree, a born again degree. And to be a disciple, engage in spiritual growth, feed the spirit so that you will have something to say. You will have something to do. And then some people are shy. They're very quiet. They would do something, but they may not want to volunteer. So we can ask them to uh, get involved, encourage them to get involved. A lot of times, um, like we've had here at K Chapel, the ministry fair, that's what I'm calling it, where the outreach ministry fair. Um, that's how I became involved with 
the uh, bereavement ministry. Uh, I went to their booth, I left my name, and I immediately received a phone call. And then uh, Johnny Gray, she's um, my gateway to K Chapel. She's my go-to person. I've been here seven years, but I still go to Johnny Gray if it's something I don't understand or if it's something I don't know. And then you have people who are working on your behalf and you don't even know it. Um, before I came, when I got to K Chapel, um, First Lady Michelle Walker at Cherry Grove Baptist Church had already talked to Lorston Johnson about me. Um, LaVon Rankin at College Hill had already talked to Claude and Linda Wilson about me. So you never know. Then you'll just have those people who will just come up and talk to you, like a sister Mary Hodges or Mother Minifield. And then um, it's just... Um, it's just amazing how if you're prayerful and you have that desire, you have a willing mind and you have an open heart, you just don't know what God can do for you. You know, it's just beyond our imagination what he can do. So I just encourage each of us to, even in this pandemic, a time when we may think, we don't have anything to do. This is a greater opportunity to me than when the church doors are open. And then never say that they, they have enough people in the choir or they have enough ushers. They have enough people doing mission work. They don't. I don't care if it's a mega church. You still don't have enough people that you need to work on God's program. So, with, in the name of Jesus, my challenge and my prayer to you is this. Touch somebody's life with your life. Touch somebody's heart with yours. Share the gift of God's love with everyone you meet. Touch somebody's life with yours. So I uh, want to thank everyone for sitting in with us, worshiping with us, learning with us today as we talked about God calling women and empowering women to do his work. And I pray that all of you have a wonderful and blessed week. Our closing prayer. Lord, help us to be more supportive and less judgmental for those you call to serve in ministry. We celebrate your sovereignty and invite you to use all for our gifts to bless your people and to build your church. Help us to encourage others as we labor together in your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.